Dogs coming on the blitz. A nice pickup. Green gets rid of it. And caught on the deflection. Put six on the board, Night fans. That is a touchdown. Haggerty is running. Hit and run. But it's right to Carter who flips the second for one. Over to first in time for a double play to end the inning. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the all-new sports show. We're mm -hmm. coming to you live mm -hmm. right here from the Palatial All-New yeah. Sports Show Studios. I'm your host, Wes Bradshaw. Join me as always to my right-hand side, Edward Green. Hello, America. Folks, join us tonight. Special mm -hmm. guest to our left from the Rocky Mount Telegram, Josh Walfish. Josh, welcome back to the All New Sports Show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here in this lovely studio. It is a lovely <sighs> studio. You're right. And folks, joining us tonight from the family Raven, <laughs> an Algerian Raven, oh. this is Ryad. Hello, Ryad. He's going to Barcelona next year. Probably. Spain is, Spain is a might bit better than Algeria. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. It's true, it does. Or in Rocky Mount. Or in Rocky Mount, as <laughs> it is done on Saturday. Yeah. Not today. No. Sure. All right, folks, coming up for you tonight. Uh, we are smack dab in mm -hmm. the middle of baseball season here in the Tri-County area. We're going to talk a little bit of baseball with you. Uh, Josh has joined us. We're going to go, uh, we're, we're going to we're gonna delve a little deeper into sport tonight, folks. Oh, yeah. When Ed and I decided we want to do that, we had to bring in an expert because, you know, we're very really one-track mind. Yeah. Soccer. Baseball, that's about it for us. Um, so, folks, Josh Walfish is here. We're going to talk about uh, the all-area teams coming out this week uh, from the Rocky Mountain Telegram. Uh, we're going to get some updates on softball, soccer. Oh, yeah. All the sports. A whole bunch of spring sports. All the sports. Mm -hmm. uh, also, folks, uh, we're going to uh, have your most exciting minute of the week. It's exciting. It was an exciting match where neither of us left too sad. No. No, no, no sadness. No sadness here. A little disappointment. No tears no sadness. here. Still, no tears still, for fears. I, I didn't rip off the pin. Still got your button. Still got my, still got my, still got your button, still eh? Still got my tie. Still got your tie. Oh, I love it. Uh, folks, and then before the show's overnight, we're going to have a couple of uh, interviews that we've done over the yes. last few weeks with you with some of our local baseball coaches. Mm -hmm. And folks, just to wrap it up, we're, we're going to give you a little WrestleMania preview. What? That's crazy. Now, I mean, while you're watching this, it's going on right yeah. now. So... We'll be able to tell you who already won matches, sure. and then we'll be telling you who's going to But you know what we're going to do, folks? Oh. We're going to pretend that we haven't even seen any of WrestleMania That's yet. crazy. That's, that's crazy, We're going to pretend. Why? We're going to pretend. So you at home can say, man, those guys, they, they, were, they were giving you, you know, some, Spot real, on. some real hard-hitting stuff. All right, folks, let's jump off with it. Uh, we are two rounds into the yes. Big East baseball season. Um, as the standings stand... Yes, very nice. nice. Well done. Uh, we have a glut in the middle. T stop me if you've ever heard this before in Big East Athletics this year. We have a lot of teams tied for second. <laughs> one team sitting up top and one team sitting on the bottom. It's crazy. crazy it, it, it's just what happens right here. Southern Nash may be the surprise leader at this juncture of the mm -hmm. season for the Big East Conference 2-0. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw them last week here on the All New Sports Show in their Everybody victory did. over Northern Nash. Um Speaking of Northern Nash themselves, they're uh, down the road rivals Nash Central, the two Wilsons, Hunt and Fike, all sitting at one and one, mm -hmm. and then Rocky Mountain, the unluckiest team in the area right now, sitting at zero and two with two one run losses, including one in extra innings. It's amazing that they are a six and six team overall, and they've scored thirty more runs than they've allowed this year. Their plus minus is impressive. Yes. In fairness, though. Yes. They scored. 30 of those runs against Tarboro and Southwest yeah. in absolute blowout fashion. It's true. So, yeah. Two other teams you've seen here on the All-New Sports Show <laughs> playing each other. Good game. Very, very good, good game. game. Very good game. Very um, So, you know, for Rocky Mount, and, you know, you look at Rocky Mount here this past week in the, uh, I believe it was the Gold Leaf mm -hmm. um, uh, Spring Tournament, Spring yeah. Break, Easter, whatever we're calling them now. Yeah. I'm not PC enough, I guess. Um <laughs> Uh, Rocky Mount went two and one. Yes, and, and it looked really good down in Wilson. Um, David Harrison receiving the uh, mm -hmm. pitcher of the tournament award. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Forrest Bell made the all tournament team. Yes. Uh, so I mean, you know, there are signs there that Rocky Mount is a good baseball team. Maybe just a little unlucky early on, um, but you know, we we kind of joke about it. 
is baseball going to be like basketball where somebody's going to win the conference with four losses, not to take anything away from Southern starting 2-0. Oh. I could totally see you winning this conference at 7-3, and 6-4. and four. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, definitely. And you look at the Firebirds, I mean, they almost won that Golden Leaf tournament yes. as, as well. Yeah. You know, they had a lead in, I think, I think going to the seventh inning against Oakwood. And if mm -hmm. they had held on, they would have won the entire tournament. Uh, you know, so they're playing great baseball right now. Uh, but the thing about Rocky Mount, where I'm going to disagree with you that they're unlucky, mm -hmm. is in baseball you create your own luck to, to some extent. Yeah, sure. to not, not as much in football and, and in basketball. I and mean, you look at it. They had late leads against Nash Central mm -hmm. and against Wilson Hunt, blew both of those games. And J.H. Yep. I, I, I was about to say, and, and well, you're going to see the, the interview with Pat Smith after they lost that game to Rose where they had a three-run seventh inning lead uh, and lost uh, after giving up six, uh, five or six in, uh, in the seventh inning there. So they have the lead, and, and mm -hmm. like you said, they have the talent mm -hmm. that says, hey, mm -hmm. they, they could potentially win the mm -hmm. Big East, but they got to find a way to close out games. And, and what, what is that, Josh? What are they lacking right now that is not allowing them to close out these games? <sighs> it's easy to say pitching, but I think that's, that, that's the real answer, where they have Wesley Drake, who's been pitching fairly well for them mm -hmm. as their number two guy. Obviously, David Harrison's, Harrison's uh, really kind of finding his form mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. But if, if David Harrison can't go seven innings, a uh, perfect example being that, that Rose game, mm -hmm. where he just ran out of pitches, and all of a sudden you have to take him out in the fifth inning, and you're winning, and you need to find an inning or two from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be that person? Forrest Bell has been playing fairly decently in the infield. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really pitched very well. You know, he, he, he was the pitcher of record. Had two mm -hmm. strong innings against Rose. And then just kind of collapsed. Exactly. That was it. So he was the pitcher of record in the Lost Rose, uh, pitcher of record in the, in the or he, he blew the lead to Nash Central. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not necessarily his fault. That's mm -hmm. kind of the role he has to, to mm -hmm. find. Mm -hmm. But unless Rocky Mount finds a true closer, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, th they're going to have trouble holding on to leads unless their starters can maintain uh, their pitch counts a little bit better. Well, and part of that, I think, is, and I think the Rose game is a great example of this, you had Jay Trost come in with 25 guys, and every time some one <laughs> Small of their roster this year, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and every time uh, head coach Ronald Vincent saw one of his pitchers go get into trouble, next guy up, next guy up, next guy up. That, I think they used five pitchers in that game, yeah. and and Rocky Mount just because of a numbers issue doesn't have that, and and while and I think that's especially in the Rose game made it tough. I think if they had more pitchers when Forrest got uh, in trouble in that seventh inning, because he looked game busters in the fifth and sixth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once he got in trouble in the seventh, that would have been a spot, okay, let's bring in somebody to get these last two outs. And, that, and I don't think Pat Smith has that right now. He doesn't have that depth. Now, certainly, you expect with a three-run lead, maybe Forrest Spell to get those last three outs. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's another issue is that it's just a numbers issue right now for baseball. Well, and as you know, I mean, with baseball, when when you, you're saying, okay, you got three-run lead, you need three outs, when you see a guy getting in trouble, mm -hmm. you know when – you pretty much know when it's time to get yeah. out and try something different. And like you said, if you don't have another option, yeah. that kind of leaves you wanting. Um, now, Rose, truth be told, everyone, Rose is kind of an unfair yeah. team to compare anyone to. I mean, this is Rose who carries 25 on the varsity roster, 30 on the JV roster, and another 30 on the ninth grade roster. <laughs> and, and then they've cut another 30. They need the jacket. I mean, this, is, this is just Rose. You know, this is – Rose is kind of the special mm – -hmm. Subject special, compared yeah. to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you love Rose, don't you? Love RV's my guy. <laughs> love you, Clay Midland. Um, but, oh. you know, I think, and just what I've seen thus far from the Big East, um, I've only seen one game. I saw Northern Southern. Mm -hmm. That's my only Big East game so far. I think we're kind of in a situation which we've been in before. Everybody has a number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that. And then we pray at number two. <laughs> Uh, you know, we saw that from Northern. We saw that from Southern. That night you and I were there. Mm -hmm. um, and there are the years, there are the teens where you'll go 2-3-D. I mean, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we were talking about before we went on camera. Mm -hmm. Rocky Mount wins a state title under Pat Smith in 2008. I mean, the fourth pitcher they went to was Benton Moss. That's pretty good. Now, he was a freshman, Benton Moss, but yeah. still it was Benton Moss. You know, mm -hmm. that was your number four um, behind some really good upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Northern Nash had their really strong teams, I mean, you were going Tyler Joyner, but then, you know, you were you were going 3-4-5, 2-3-4, were also very good pitches mm -hmm. you come out. You don't get that kind of pitch in depth every year. Um, everybody has somebody. 
And then I think I think there's just going to be a lot of teams who are, you know, in the in the sixth inning, wondering who's going to get me these last six outs. And ironically enough, I think Rocky Mount probably actually has the, the best second second starter in, in Wellesley Drake. I mean, the mm -hmm. two times I've seen him pitch, he's mm -hmm. been absolutely lights out, fantastic. Granted, mm -hmm. not against the best competition, but still, you know, he, he had good command of his of his of mm -hmm. his off speed stuff. Um, was able to locate that fastball well for strikes mm -hmm. or, you know, miss him in the, in, in the right spot. So that, that leaves bodes well for them in terms of uh, mm -hmm. praying for the second starter. But the biggest issue Rocky Mount ran into the first half of this year is David Harrison was not the pitcher mm -hmm. Pat Smith expected him to be. Right. Uh, and he talked about it with me after the, the Rose game was he, he something had to happen that David Har was, Harrison was going to get back to the type of talent he had at the mm -hmm. end of last year and sort of allowed NC State to kind of get into the mix for him to That's play right. baseball there. Uh, he didn't look like a ACC pitcher for the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. And when Rocky Mount's going up against some good teams and Corinth Holders, Rose, right. they need good pitching mm -hmm. uh, from their ace, and they just didn't get it. Uh, well, you know, and pitching is one of those fickle things. You know, sometimes it takes pitching a while to catch up once the season starts. You know, it can – a lot of things depend on, you know, their throw schedule, what they've been doing in the offseason. And, and truly, and Pat Smith would tell you, I would rather have great David Harrison – against Northern Nash than great David Harrison against Corinth Holders. Sure. Like, you know, because your, your goal is to win those conference games. Um, but as you say, you know, Harrison has started to come around, obviously, here this week at the Gold Leaf. Yep. Uh, he pitched very well. Um, I mean, that is a kid who's got all the time in the world. Uh, an NC State commitment. He's a junior. Uh, really, really good pitching body. You know, just one of those really projectionable guys. Got a really live arm. Um, so that, you know, in that – in that sense, I think Rocky Mount's going to be okay overall on the pitching end. Um, one thing that's been Rocky Mount's downfall, especially the last few years, has been um, defensively. Mm -hmm. And that's come back to bite them a few times this year. And I think they look all right defensively. Mm -hmm. I think they look very fundamentally sound. I, I think I may have mentioned this to you. Or, no, I mentioned it to you mm -hmm. in the Rose game. I, didn't, I, I don't know if I mentioned it to you. With all due respect, this may be – one of the weakest collection of outfield arms I've ever seen no. in that Rocky Mount outfield. And that's, <laughs> and that's, I think that was something which you may hear later, Pat Smith talked about in his interview, is you know every time somebody would get to second, it was almost automatically to third, mm -hmm. because you would see them tagging up on fly balls to short center and, and, and making it pretty easy into third. I, I think that that's, that's the issue. I think defensively mm -hmm. they actually look pretty good. Um, but I think that they are definitely going to have trouble throwing out base runners, I think that that's where teams can really take advantage of them in grabbing extra bases, scoring runs on sack flies, and that's something Rocky Mountain, I think, is going to have issue with, with pretty much all year. And still in second, too. I mean, there were a couple of times in the Rose yeah. game where uh, the catcher popped up, tried to throw to second, threw it away. Yeah. Um, you know, that's... That, that, those are easy bases to take as well when the ball's yeah. halfway in the outfield. Well, that's fundamental. I mean, that's stuff you work on, stuff you got to get better. And I'll say this for Pat Smith, of course, second time around for Pat Smith. Um, <clears throat> I think – I think he's walked into a little better situation talent-wise this time than he did back in the mid-2000s. Of course, you guys weren't here at that time. I'm the only one who saw that face-to-face. Uh, -face. But, um, you know, it, it took him a few seasons to get that ship righted the first time. It may, I think a lot of people, when he came back, immediately, oh, God, Rocky Mount's back. Pat Smith's back. Rocky Mount's back. Um, it still may take him a season of – you know, putting in his philosophies, his ideas um, to get this group back to where they want well, to be. And now, Josh, move, moving on from Rocky Mountain, mm -hmm. let's talk about the team that is 2-0 and and maybe may a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Let's talk about Southern Nash. Obviously, again, we saw them mm -hmm. uh, in the last live game we yeah. did. Uh, really pounded Northern Nash after those first couple innings. Mm -hmm. They have they have a lot of really good bats on that team. Uh, pitching, as we said, may be a bit suspect throughout the entire league. But I think Southern might be a team that kind of surprises. Nine and five overall this season, as you said, played very well in that Wilson tournament. Uh, how is how is Southern Nash kind of done this this year? I, I think some is just going under the radar. You know, and, and Wes talked about. I mean, going into the season, the the a lot of what we focused on was Rocky Mount with Pat Smith. You know, mm -hmm, can he can he ha given the talent that the mm -hmm. Griffons have, can he sort of mm -hmm. re-energize them, revitalize them to make them biggest contenders. We looked at Northern Nash and, and them returning um, the Tyler Barrett, the, oh, yeah. the, the, our, mm -hmm. our all-area. A lot of on that team. Yeah, I was like, 
you know, all area uh, hitter of the year last mm -hmm. year. Uh, and Southern last year got off to a decent start, and, and we kind of, kind of petered out. I, I think that's semi what we were expecting. But they mm -hmm. came out, they beat Fike, you know, mm -hmm. who, who's uh, who was one of the favorites. Uh, you know, were able to win a slugfest against Northern Ash, and it's it's looking very interesting for them coming up this week. They have Hunt uh, on Tuesday, and then a big game at home against Rocky Mountain on Friday. Mm -hmm, certainly, uh, you know, I'll be at that game. Uh, at the mm -hmm. very least, I, th I think that's going to show us a lot. If they can come out of this week one and one at the worst, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're at three and one, I think you sit there and say, you know what, this this team may be for real. Now, if Hunt beats them and Rocking Out beats them soundly, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's two and two, and and uh, there's a new life in some of the teams behind them, not hundred percent sure, but definitely Southern is playing good baseball at the right time at the very mm -hmm. least, and starting to maybe catch a couple of people's eyes. Oh, wait, th this isn't a, an easy game for us anymore. And, uh, of course, at the end of the show, folks, we promised you a couple of interviews. One, we said Pat Smith after the Rose game. The other will be uh, Coach Todd Brewer yes. after the Northern Nash game. So you'll get to hear a little more uh, about Southern as we go on. But, you know, I was impressed with Southern. A, you know, they really brought some bats out there. They went out to hit the ball. Yeah, they did. And, B, when you start looking down that roster, you got a bunch of juniors. <laughs> A bunch of juniors and sophomores that they're playing. You know, this is a team that may be here to stay for a few years. And, you know, what we talked about, when we say, well, we didn't know anything about Southern folks, it's not because, you know, we don't push Southern to the side. It's just when you're here where where we are here in town, the Rocky Mountain, the Northern, the Nash Central, even when we go to Wilson, the Fike and the Hunt guys, they're all playing locally in, in summer ball. A lot of the Southern Nash players, um, they don't play – right here in town right. in the summer ball so you don't see them as much we don't get the full spectrum of them um but southern nash is always a place and historically you just you don't know until you play them and some years they turn out to have some really good baseball teams yes and i think this year we're seeing a good one um now we saw their number two pitching um, I've got to. I've got to assume. You know, with their number one on the mound, Southern's going to be a very tough out for anyone this year. Mm -hmm. But 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 the problem is the pitching is the weak spot for Southern Nash, mm -hmm. and that's what hurt them last year. You know, they had, they had some talented hitters last year, mm -hmm. and, and we saw that, that they hit very consistently through a big East season. Mm -hmm. But they're only scoring five six runs, which in theory should be good enough to win a couple of games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but their arms weren't weren't, weren't there. Uh, if they can get some some timely pitching at the very least, mm -hmm. and maybe. Uh, Unlike Rocky Mount, maybe find a, a guy who can who can give you mm -hmm. two or three outs, right. uh, you know, a full inning work at the back mm -hmm. end there. Maybe, maybe they have a chance to, to win a lot more games than they did last year, where they hit the ball well, but mm -hmm. they, they they couldn't stop anybody from scoring against them. Of course, the team we saw them beat Northern Nash. Yes. You know, Northern's a team. Northern, we, we always, we always kind of say Northern. Northern. They're a little Jekyll. They're a little Hyde. Yeah. Um, as yeah. soon as you pick them, Wes. Yeah, as soon as I pick them, bad things happen. Um, now, let's start with the good at Northern Nash. Tyler Barrett is a, uh, to, to borrow a phrase from one of my wrestling tag teams, he is a bona fide stud. Yeah. Uh, that kid can play. He yeah. can absolutely rip the cover off the baseball. We did not see him at his best against Southern no. Nash. Southern kept him off balance. But Tyler Barrett's a heck of a player, as Josh mentioned, uh, the all-area returning hitter of the yes. year. Um, he's also, I believe he's their number one pitcher. Yeah. Um, so that's a guy they're building around at Northern. Um, Northern look to have some good baseball players. It's just they've they've got to get consistency at Northern Nash. Uh, the you know, new coach this year for them, um, but but uh, it's a guy who's been there, so it's not a brand new philosophy for him. But this is a Northern squad that I still see being a player here in the Big East Conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, it, 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 we're only two games into the season. There's eight games mm -hmm. left. A lot of things can happen. Uh, but the thing that concerns me about, about Northern is who else they're going to throw behind Tyler Barrett. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, they, they got uh, uh, the, their sidearm. Their sidearm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Whit Casper. Yeah, yeah Whit, Whit Casper, who, again, you talked about going back to our relief pitcher, a very good relief pitcher for mm -hmm. them last year because he had the sidearm delivery mm -hmm. kind of – uh, a different sort of. Uh, you don't adjusted. see that. Right. You don't and see that. Really throw off lot. high school kids, right? Yeah. And, 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 and exactly, he throws off high school kids. Now, is he going to be? Uh, I think he could potentially be the number two star, but can he keep that for for five, sure. six innings? You know, that's that's a big question mark. And and I'm going to keep saying it again. You know, obviously, the the who can get you three outs when you need the most in the sixth Very and seventh so. inning after uh, after Barrett leaves. But like I said, mm -hmm. with, with Barrett 
hitting and, and if they can kind of build some, some other mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the, the lineup around him, they, they've got a chance to, to be competitive. Yeah. Well, and we talk about, you know, that bullpen, that's what kind of blew up for Northern Nash. Yeah. That Southern game was... Uh, I it think was, it was the complete inability to throw strikes is what it got down. Yeah, and, and it was, you know, not to throw the kid on the bus, it was Wit Casper who came in and suddenly couldn't, a couple guys just couldn't find the plate. Couldn't find the plate. Um, but, I mean, I still think Northern just, I think they hit the ball well enough that they're going to be a, a very tough, very tough out for anybody. I also thought they weren't that great defensively. To, and again, this was just one game, but I, yeah. I, I would have questions about them defensively. They did not look very stable. And Josh, not to not to to throw Wilson under the bus here, but the last one we're going to have you focus on mm -hmm. is the team that you know beat Rocky Mount to start the uh, the Big East season. And that is Nash Central. Uh, they they played a thriller in game one, uh, and then and then of course drop their second game as Nash Central is prone to do. Um, what's what's kind of. <laughs> Well, this is, central, don't here's, the, also, here's the thing. This is also the man who, in the last week of Big East basketball, said, Nash Central's pretty much got the conference locked well, up. But I told that. There's 20 <laughs> scenarios. Only one of them makes them not win the conference. Which one happened? I'm glad you put that one out there so we knew what to look for. <laughs> I said that crap. Anyway, um... So I love you, Nash Central. My heart bleeds for you at a time. So what? What we haven't gotten a chance to see Nash Central baseball here again. They right. did win the Thriller against Rocky Mountain. Yeah. Uh, what can we expect from Central moving forward? Basically, what we see from the, the, the first two games of Big East season, which is in, inconsistent uh, talent. We mm -hmm. saw it last mm -hmm. year too. I mean, Zach mm -hmm. Patterson as a sophomore last year was a phenomenal number one starter for them, mm -hmm. and. They all, you know, with that extra year of experience, uh, you know, they're another team that has a lot of juniors, mm -hmm. sophomores mm -hmm. on their roster, could potentially build on that and, and be uh, a, diff a dangerous team moving forward. Mm -hmm. That being said, they were inconsistent last year. They're being, they're, they're playing inconsistently again this year. Uh, Willie Langley took over for for Tony Guzzo uh, this year, and when they're on and when they're playing up to their potential, I think they could definitely win the Big East. And, and I thought that last year, too. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw them play that opener against Rocky Mount, and you look at the Patterson and Helms went toe-to-toe -to -toe, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. for, for six and a half innings. Uh, you know, I was like, this is a team that could, could potentially even win the conference. That being said, you know, Zach Patterson didn't always pitch to his best in, in the Big East last mm -hmm. year. Uh, had a good first start this year. Um, you know, but again, it's, it's building that consistency. It's building um, that belief that you can win these games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think certainly uh, beating Rocky Mountain in the fashion they did yes. built some of that belief, but they couldn't keep that belief. Granted, they played a very good fight team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but, but they couldn't keep that. And like I said, I'll be curious to see how they do against Northern, how they do uh, against Southern Nash, mm -hmm. um, how they do against Hunt. Probably, if we're ranking the teams based on town alone, the 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 three that they could potentially actually beat, you know, on paper, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and we'll see again. They're another team that we're going to see a lot more uh, about how they're they're made up and, and, and how good of a chance they have um, once they they play a couple more games here. I guess I will be the one that says it. At the end of the day, here's here's my other problem with Nash Central. Okay. Nash Central. I'm sorry, yeah. till someone changes the culture. You're right. And, and, and look, baseball, if no one else, baseball and this basketball season is helping. Yes. Um, not to get into a big football discussion here, um, I think they're on the right path awesome. with Chris Lee. But at the end of the day, for programs, for programs to really turn themselves around, mm -hmm. it's a program-wide um kind of cleansing that almost need to happen because um, it was it was a rotting program. But, but let's also look at the fact that they're going to go to 2A in, in two years. That's true. And so they're really punching up above their, their weight class at the moment. You know, because they Barely, are... Barely, by like seven people. But, but, but... <laughs> true. Yeah, but they are... Like, I, you're but, right. But, 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 they're also, but they're also significantly smaller than the other teams in the Big East. And... I mean, significantly in terms of kind of where they are in terms right. of the, of the mm -hmm. cutoff. I mean, I think North, I think Northern was the smallest of the other Big East schools, mm -hmm. and they were two hundred some odd students above the cutoff line. Okay. You know, so so th there are mm -hmm. there are those factors, and, and Nash Central probably is more 
uh, competitive within the two-way mm -hmm. ranks. Uh, but again, we have to take football out when it comes yeah. when, when yeah, it comes yeah. to, to judging Nash Central as a program because oh, Nash so Central so. football, you know, they, they they had that one good season under Kevin, Kevin Crude up. There. <laughs> but other than that, they they've mm. had to go up against just a some very very talented football teams. You know, it, between Fike and Hunt and Rocky Mount, uh, you know, Northern hasn't been spectacular lately. I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying anything. I know I you're not going to say anything. I didn't say it. I know, but I mean, they haven't spectacular. <laughs> you saw it going across your face. But you, even last year's team, as, as, as poor as Northern played in mm -hmm. some of those games last year, they still went into Nash Central and just utterly dominated them last year. So Nash Central football is mm -hmm. light years behind the rest of the Big East. Yeah. And that's right. not the case in most of the other sports. No. Right. Um, but, I mean, as far as baseball, though, <laughs> baseball – Baseball is one one. They've had some down years. They're usually kind of a middle team when it comes to baseball. Now they had some good years. Xavier Macklin was there. You know, that's yeah. a kid playing in the A's organization. Alex Pierce was a really good player for them. They've had some good baseball teams. Um, but you know, at, at a point, and we've talked about it a lot before. Yeah. Um, at a point, you know, there's just sort of a feeling that comes over. An entire program, and not just football, not just just an entire program, mm -hmm. where you know if if everything has always ended up bad for you, mm -hmm. well, let's say if you play on the football team, well, if suddenly you're down in baseball late, a lot of times you're gonna have a tendency, we're just gonna lose anyway. I mean, and and that's something that I think you're starting to see a small turn of the boat at Nash mm -hmm. Central. I mean, I mean, once again, let's talk about I mean that basketball team. We did talk about the scenario, and that, yeah. that was more for a laugh. But, I mean, that basketball team, that was the first time they've been good in about four years. But, they were, but the, um, the other problem was they mm -hmm. were so flawed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, they and, just yeah. – so, But they, so they, 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 they won of, games. Right. But, but, they, uh -huh. but I think they also, towards the end of the season, regressed to, oh, yeah. to, uh -huh. to the mean. Yeah. More, more than I, I, I think got worse. They just well, kind of started playing like we thought they probably would for the entire well, season. And here's, here's my quick take on basketball. When you live by the three, you die by the three. Mm -hmm. When you are a jump shooting team, I mean, we've seen it. We, we saw, saw Villanova do it last night. Oh, we've seen that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you made me think okay. this was a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, think about some of those Duke teams where, you know, yeah. J.J. Oh, Redick God, was yes. the best player in the country. Mm -hmm. They jump shot, they jump shot, they jump shot, they get in the Sweet 16. Oh, my God, my legs hurt. I can't jump shoot anymore. Yeah. That that was more it. But, but what I will give Central a lot of credit for was more their mentality this year. Mm -hmm. Where in the past, you know, one of those games, jump shots don't start falling. We're getting beat by 30. <laughs> and they do. This year you saw them w really will themselves with some wins. And if that can if that can dribble down to the baseball program, dribble down to the football program. And we've seen it dribble down to the baseball program. Exactly. Exactly. Like said, that 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 win over Rock Mountain to, 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 exactly. to, win, to begin the season was monumental yeah. for them. Not exactly. not because they beat Rock Mountain, but because they were down. They, under they, they were down. They came back to tie it. Rock Mountain took the lead again. They came back to tie in the seventh. Yep. Rock Mountain took the lead in extra innings, and Nashville came back to win it at, at that, the end. There, that that's, that's the type of mentality that can that's that can huge. maybe make them Absolutely. a dangerous team come to the space. And that's the mentality that has to you know if it can start with baseball. It can flow into the other programs, um, and, and you know that's just that, that's that's a big time for them. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess we're we're about going to take a break. Absolutely. And just one thing to throw in: um, Rocky Mel is the smallest four A team in the state for thirty years, <laughs> and we were still good. Ah, folks, you know me, West Branch, all the old Capstone. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have your most exciting minute of the week. We're going to uh, talk about the all-area teams for the Rocky Mountain Telegram, uh, and we're going to preview WrestleMania that's going on right now. Yeah. Totally. Preview. All right. <laughs> we're going to have it for you. We'll be right back with more here in just a moment on the all-new sports show on WHIG-TV. Ready, ready again as usual. Man, it's excitement in there. It's pure excitement. Exclusive stuff. Exclusive blazers. Straight from Sicily. Palermo.
We open every day, Monday through Sunday. You come down here and we're going to take care of you. I don't follow the trend, I create the trend. So come to PJs and be a trendsetter. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome back to the All New Sports Show here on WHIG TV. I'm Wes Bradshaw. Joining me, A. Green. Joining me, Josh Walfish. And, folks, we have, uh, we've done a little Big East baseball, kind of mm -hmm. caught you up, especially on the Nash County teams. Sorry, Wilson. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is at this point. No Paul Durham tonight, unfortunately. No, no PD. His show has uh, not started yet. <laughs> uh, folks, at this point, as you know, we come out for that first break. It is time for your most exciting minute of the week. It's time for 60 seconds of soccer. Warms me heart. Oh, big explosions there. Girds me loins. It should. All right, folks, time for your 6 second soccer. By the way, Josh, you, you notice the little Wolves logo coming down? I did. That's yeah. for one of your predecessors, uh, Mr. Nick yeah. Petrovich. That's our uh, that's our little shout-out to Petrovich. Lo loved his Wolves. Love, love the Wolves. Love the Wolves. <laughs> Maybe they'll be back in the Prem one day. used to watch the illegal Brazilian streams <laughs> in his friend's basement <laughs> just so you can see Wolves. Oh. All right, Ed, 60 seconds on the clock. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Folks, uh, the Premier League was back yeah. on Saturday. Uh, the all-new sports show Derby, Liverpool, Tottenham. Fantastic match. Fantastic really match. Good. Really up and down. Really, really exciting. Good. Ended 1-1. Uh, Philly Coutinho with the opener. Absolutely sublime. Uh, Ari Kane, Real Madrid's Harry Kane. England's with Harry a Kane. fantastic finish to the, even the match. Both teams had chances laid on. Couldn't make them happen. So uh, as it stands, uh, four points off first place. Um, well, of course. Well, because Leicester dropped points today. Uh, of course, Leicester dropped points today. Uh, Liverpool sitting in the ninth spot uh, with a couple games in hand. We're doing okay. Uh, we head to Dortmund this week. Awesome. We play the Germans. That'll be fun. It's be wonderful. Who it's cool. You guys Dortmund. have in the in the league. Dortmund doesn't matter. Dortmund. Okay. That's, that's true. That is Europa's all that matters. all that matters. Oh, Europa, the best competition in the world. Don't ever forget that. Um, yeah, it was a great game, though. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've, we've seen, you know, 1-1 games that are like, all right, whatever. This was a very exciting 1-1 game. Could have maybe even been like 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three, maybe even later so on. It wasn't a Manchester United, Manchester City 1-1. One, one, oh, God. Where you were asleep five minutes ago. Uh, that's gross. Um, <laughs> we have nothing to concentrate on now except for the Premier League. And uh, I look forward to a big team with one of those minnows, Manchester United, coming in to uh, town this weekend. We're going to Dortmund. That's all I can say. I'm just going to add, though, with Southampton's sure. win, that is poses very poorly for Liverpool because they're now five back at the Saints. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, right, we're winning Europa. We're going to Champions League anyway. <laughs> we're fine. No problems here. We have Klopp. Everybody get off me. We got Klopp. Six saying soccer is over. Yeah, it is. Wow. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> back to back to local area sports. Yeah, sure. All right, folks. Uh, this week, uh, with it being the spring break week, uh, the Rocky Mount Telegram has been releasing their all area mm -hmm. teams. Um, of course, it's all area, so a lot of our local athletes were in there. Yay! I can confidently say that. Yes. Sorry, Wilson County <laughs> again. Yeah. Sorry, Kim Wilson. <laughs> it's kind of what we do. Um, I didn't feel fans just went click. <laughs> hey, we're coming to see you guys play baseball this week. That's true. So, let's preview that real quick. Okay, sure. <laughs> Next week's all this sports show. Go ahead, Ed. You'll be there. Uh, that'll be Beddingfield at Wilson Fike. Uh, should be a very, very good out of conference game. Absolutely. I'll be our first chance to see Beddingfield this year, though. Right, uh, Beddingfield have looked very good so far uh, right. on paper. So hopefully they they dress to impress on Wednesday night. I will be there calling it along with uh, Deuce Deuce and Tadich. I would be there, but I'll be with Josh Walfish, or as I call him, Louis Van Hallfish. Oh yeah. As we uh, we coach our uh, dominant pterodactyl for you, Rocky Mount Hot Shot Soccer Team. That's great. Pterodactyl United. <laughs> That's for me. Pterodactyl exactly. United. Is that the right? Why do you go with that? Pterodactyl United or Pterodactyl City? How's that? Or, no, Pterodactyl FC. Pterodactyl FC. <laughs> 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 we love it. 
You oh, thought 60 God. seconds of soccer was over. It's never it's over. It's never over. All right, boys, let's talk about our all-area teams. Ed, you've got them up in front. Yeah. Um, Josh, where, where do you want to start? I know we have had we had a handful of teams this year. We'll get to basketball. Um, let, let's talk about some of our others. Uh, I see uh, I see swimming. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's, it's in swi- <laughs> swimming. <laughs> swimming. Not swimming, <laughs> wrestling, and basketball. Okay. Uh, I mean, We'll start. We'll start with swimming. Uh, Jen Jackson was our, our yep. girls' swimmer of the year, fourth mm-hmm. time uh, for hers all four years. Uh, she in the honor. She's pretty good. But, but, but she is, uh, and she was head and shoulders above anybody else mm-hmm. in, in our in our area. Uh, finished second in the fifty free for the second consecutive year. Um, she has four second place finishes in the state t- in, in the state good. meet. Uh, that 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 title eluded her, um, but but she was. She was okay with that. Uh, she said she had a lot of fun this year just swimming for her teammates. Not oh, necessarily even not for herself, uh, swimming for her teammates. Um, and she's, she'll be going to Gardner-Webb to swim for them next year. So Great. Division One swimmer Bulldogs. at the very least. Yes, the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. Fighting Bulldogs, I think. Fighting Bulldogs. Uh, but, yeah, definitely a, 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 a incredible swimmer, but more importantly, I, I think an incredible person. Mm-hmm. Um, White you know, Phillips on the boys' side? Yeah, I was saying, Sorry, White, I didn't mean yeah, to say that. Yeah, I was going to lead it into to Wyatt Phillips, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit it was not a strong uh, boys' class this year. Uh, only three individual qualifiers for the state championship. Taro had a relay team uh, as well. Um, but with only three individual qualifiers, mm-hmm. it really kind of uh, limited what we could do. But, I mean, again, what, that's to say it's not like Wyatt was a mm-hmm. uh, – it was was some uh, schlump. I mean, you know, big, big East swimmer of the year, uh, champion in the 200 uh, freestyle, uh, finished 18th in the state in the 50 freestyle. Um, you know, really a, a strong uh, leader for the Griffons as well. Um, Rocky Mount High, not not a swimming uh, prod- uh, uh, powerhouse, so to speak. Uh, you know, so so having a, a leader like him, he actually one of the things that. <coughs> interested me the most uh, when talking to him was he recruited almost almost the entire team uh, you know in some way shape or form, form you know he kind of convinced them to come out and, and, and swim originally mm-hmm. um, you know so again th- they weren't uh, state championship quality swimmers mm-hmm. but they were all you know, very good swimmers and, and Wyatt another uh, exceptional student going to Carolina uh, will swim club there uh, wrestling it was it was Wilson Smith. Speaking the, of winning a state title, yeah, I was like speaking of winning a state title. I mean, Wilson Smith was just it's been a good year for the Cats. Absolutely though. dominant again this year for a second straight state title. Um, and one of the things that I, I laughed at when Fa- when I read Foster's story originally was the story didn't even focus on him winning a second title. He's like, all right, let's go for number three. Let's 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 <laughs> let's, 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 let's jump out. Well, obviously. Let's go to number three. Um, well, yeah, you know, and, and he's. Such an incredibly skilled wrestler. Uh, one of the things I, uh, another thing I found funny was Jermaine Jones, who's the wrestling coach, mm-hmm. said, "At this point, I'm not really teaching him technique. I'm just his time management coach, telling him how much time's left in the round." Uh, you get a job in the NFL, then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you, you know, and the, the other thing is, and going back to, to, to the capstone and winning state championships, I know that's 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 your favorite. That's what he's here for, really. Um, one of the un, sort of the, oh, the underlying storylines from the football season this year was mm-hmm. a lot of the, the football players talk at Wilson Smith before the season about what it takes to be a champion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and he kind of, him winning that state title last year really kind of kick-started Rockman High saying, oh, wait, you know, this guy knows what it be, means mm-hmm. to be a champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he showed it this year. And, and he was a more than deserving uh, wrestler of the year um, in that regard. And we'll, we'll we'll stick up. And I'm guessing yeah. what was his what was his finisher? Uh, leg drop, big elbow off the top, wrong wrestling. Nico, Nico, knee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom, yay. Yes, the, 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 the headlock pin, I believe. Was, Did he was watch Nakamura night. on cell on Friday night? That's what I need to know. Oh, dog. Uh, <laughs> and one quickly with, with, with basketball, our girls' part of the year from Rockman High was Kiana Spivey. Yep. Uh, a little bit, I was personally a little bit surprised she wasn't the Big East Player of the Year, uh, considering how dominant she was. Mm-hmm. But in sort of Big East fashion, the, the Player of the Year went to a team that won the actual championship, uh, Robbie Allen, an incredible talent uh, as Great. well. But the thing about Kiana that really stood out to me was, mm-hmm. and we saw in the Big East tournament, 
when the lights were on mm -hmm. and the pressure was oh, on, that, that championship high, game was great. Kiana Spivey stepped up. She mm -hmm. averaged 23 and a half points in the, in the Big East tournament over three girls games. Basketball. <laughs> um, yeah, you do. You know, she, she scored 22 points and, and had and grabbed 19 rebounds in the first round. Went mm -hmm. over over Lee County. She went 17 and nine. Mm -hmm. uh, in the loss to Rockham County. And, and like I said, when, when the Griffons needed somebody to go to, Keanu Spivey really stepped into that role. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Rockham High is bringing almost everybody back <laughs> next year. So, Well, you know, just real quick, you talk about Robbie Allen. I thought um, through the season, you know, Nash Central is a very deserving regular season winner. Yes. I thought they were the best team in the Big East this year. Um, but, you know, Spivey, I thought just what I saw, I thought she was the best single player. Yep. I thought Central was more well-rounded and mm -hmm. had, you know, a better core. But Spivey is fantastic. And, and, and that kind of talent can carry you through a tournament. Exactly. As, as, Which as they did, did right. in the Big playoff. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, Nash Central had six, uh, six players – or mm -hmm. six, no, sorry, seven players named to our – our all, exactly. our all area team. Yeah. Uh, so when you're 70, Rocky Mount had three, <laughs> yeah. uh, or two actually, just Michelle Keeney and uh, uh, and Kiana. And Kiana. then our boys player of the year, uh, Josh Mullins for National Central. Not a Rocky Mount player. Uh, not a Rocky Mount player, unfortunately. Uh, oh my God, he was explosive, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was. And that, that was the thing that really stood out was if you need somebody to, to, to get you 30 points, Josh Mullins was your best bet in the Big East this year. Josh, we need 30. Gotcha. <laughs> and you know, it, it, and we, t we talked about you, you talked about earlier about <laughs> sort of the, the three ball dying, but he found ways in, in the yeah. in the season finale yeah. in Southern Ash. I think he only hit two threes, you know, but he was able to drive. He was able to get to the foul line, mm -hmm. you know, kind of get some easy points. And you know, he was he was the single reason why Nash Central won a share of the, of the mm -hmm. league at the very mm -hmm. least. Um, you know, just just. The, the, he scored 50 in a in a in the Cleveland tournament, I think, in, in, in a game. Yeah, I mean, he put he put he put up 28 against Northern Nash in the first half of a game earlier this year. Uh, just just certainly a, a the best pure scorer mm -hmm. um, in our area. Uh, although Elijah McCann from Rock Mountain Academy might end up being the best overall pretty good. Yeah, he, he's yeah, a very good player, yeah. best maybe overall prospect in terms of looking ahead in, in uh -huh. terms of playing the next level, but. It's hard to deny Josh Mullins and sort of the impact he had on the boys' basketball scene this year. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, uh, all, every one of these guys are named as your uh, player of the year, all extremely sure. deserving. And the thing is, in most of these sports, there were other people he could have gone to as well. I mean, they were definitely good enough. Um, so congratulations to our all area this year. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed seeing that in the Telegram this week. Um, if you were out of town, go through your back issues. And check or them go out. online Very good on the RockyMountTelegram.com. Oh, wow, what are you, a witch? God, the intranet. You and Al Gore, I hear That's you. That's probably where the majority of people are watching this right now. You and Al Gore. Who was Al Gore making out with lately? Did I hear something about Never mind. Yeah, we just had a TED Talk. That was it, okay. <laughs> he was making out a TED Talk. That's right, folks. We're talking Al Gore rumors now. That's how we roll. All right, folks, we talked a little baseball with uh, with you earlier. And folks, we got yeah. Josh here. We're delving into his expertise. We're oh. talking a little Big East softball. Yes. Which, folks, unfortunately, you know, we, we get uh, we get the occasional call. Why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover this? I do. I folks, will say one of the biggest regrets uh -huh. I've had, well, I had last year, was that we did not cover the Big East Girls Soccer Championship. And instead, we covered the baseball championship because that game was Phenomenal. That was Wilson Fike going oh, undefeated yeah. oh. and getting scored on late on an own goal by Hunt. It would have been magical. I, I'm, I'm, I was sad we did not have to. Uh, but, folks, yeah, we, we definitely we, we try to talk about everything we can. Yes. Um, but we're just two men. And I do other stuff too, so um, you know. But when we've got Josh Wallfish in, he's the guy. He knows what's yes. going on. Uh, last week we saw him at Northern Nash softball. Yeah. So uh, he's got the inside. So Josh, let's uh, let's quickly run down uh, Big East softball. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Big East softball, it's mm -hmm. the haves and the have-nots, basically. Uh, Fike, Nash Central, Rocky Mount will finish. Well, let me rephrase it. Fike will finish fourth. Rocky Mount will finish sixth. Nash Central will finish fifth. Uh, yeah, which then that's a down year for Nash Central because they're they're a pretty good softball program. They they, they are they they the, 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 no, no I mean, I mean they, they are a decent <laughs> softball program. They they actually are. The problem is they just don't have the horses to compete mm -hmm. with Northern, mm -hmm. Southern, uh, and Hunt this year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, Northern Nash uh, is one and one. Southern's one and one. Hunt is two and zero. Oh. 
but Hunt came back uh, to beat Northern uh, late in the, in, the, in the season opener. Uh, what was actually a, a very thrilling softball game. Uh, talking with Coach uh, Greg Thankton down in Northern mm-hmm. Nash uh, when I was there last week. He felt very differently <laughs> about, the, about how that happened. He, you know, he was disappointed in uh, how poorly his team fielded mm-hmm. the ball mm-hmm. uh, late in that game. But they came back and, and they did something that they really haven't done the past three years, and that's get a load of hits off of Olivia Lamb. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing about Olivia Lamb is she's probably the best pitcher in the Big East, but she's the best pitcher in the Big East because it's not that she throws strikes, she fools you into swinging at really bad pitches. Uh, you know, because... It's going to have. <laughs> it, 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 See, I mean, unfortunately, I couldn't <laughs> fool anybody to swing at my bad pitches. <laughs> I just threw bad pitches. No, because the thing is, Olivia Lim is not the fastest pitcher. Mm-hmm. You know, she's probably going to be throwing in the high 40s, low 50s. And that is very jarring for some of these girls who are used to seeing pitchers, you know, between 55, 60 miles mm-hmm. an hour. And so what they do is they look and, and they kind of see this meatball coming at them like i'm gonna smack it and they swing and after they swing they realize it was at their eyeballs Mm. uh you know and northern did it a ton and when they stopped swinging at at, at those Uh high pitches and forced olivia lamb to actually throw strikes they were able to to make better contact Uh against her uh so again in terms of the offense northern ash by far the the best uh Mm -hmm. you know one through nine they have a lot uh, a lot of girls who could just smash the, the, the softball and, and knock the cover off of it. That being said, they're going to start a freshman, you know, and as good as Jenna McKinney looked against Southern Nash, um, you know, sh- she's going to have the ups and downs of, of being a freshman, uh, you know, and, and next year she's probably going to be uh, the best pitcher in, in the Big East. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it's can Northern really ride a freshman to, to the title this mm-hmm. year? Uh, Hunt, you know, like I said, Hunt has is, is got to find a way to – to beat Southern Nash. Uh, if they can beat Southern Nash, maybe they can uh, have a chance. And, and Southern just has to find the timely hitting. Um, th- they found it uh, when they beat Fike uh, to mm-hmm. open the season. They found some timely hitting. Uh, they found some timely hitting late against Northern Nash. Mm-hmm. Couldn't really do much with it. Um, but if they can find some timely hitting and, and, and kind of let Olivia Lamb uh, work, her, work her magic on the, on the mound, They've got a decent chance. Um, but but th- it's those three and then kind of everybody else in, when it comes to softball. And uh, moving on to a different sport now, mm-hmm. uh, we also have what's well, well, been a pretty good sport here in, uh, recently. It's uh, boys tennis, uh, which, has been, which has been making some strides here in our area. Uh, tell us what we could look out for in the, uh, the tennis ranks this uh, year. It's pretty much a th- uh, I, I love saying it's going to be a three-horse race. But, I mean, three-horse races are the but, best. But, 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 well, but you look, but you look at it is. Fike beat Southern, lost to Rocky Mount. Mm-hmm. Rocky Mount beat Fike, lost to Southern, and obviously you can fill yeah. in the, the other third. So mm. you got you got you got three teams that are tied at the top of three and one uh, in the conference. So that that being said, Fike's probably the best one through six, mm-hmm. um, and, and I think they'll end up taking the, the conference title. Um, but Rocky Mount has probably the top two. Mm. Two of the three best, I'll say, singles players. And, and Tyler Bryce, uh, whose sisters had remarkable success mm-hmm. for, for Coach Barry Nethercutt, uh, and George Shannon. And, and those, those two have played remarkable tennis at mm-hmm. the top of, of the Griffons lineup. Uh, and so if you're looking for two players to look out for, uh, it would be those two. And you'll love this, Wilson County fans. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include Fikes, uh, Sandy Sandu, because you know, he was a little That's bit... Name. Yeah, a great name, but uh, name. but you know he was a little bit ill last mm-hmm. week, and uh, that's part of the reason why Rocky was able to beat Fike. Uh, they were able to get some wins because Fike had to to move some some guys up in, in their lineup. Uh, but but he when he's healthy, uh, great serve, um, very active on the court. Uh, somebody that can give uh, some of the better players in North Carolina a lot of mm-hmm. trouble because of just sort of his length and, and some of the shots he's able to, to get back over the net. And uh, lastly, I guess uh, girls' soccer, which of course sport of champions, <laughs> which as we mentioned a few minutes ago, Wilson Fike has been very dominant the last two years. Uh, basically, went undefeated last year, um, making a run almost to the state title. Uh, what are, what can we see this year in uh, in girls' soccer? Yeah. The the gap between Fike and the rest of the Big East is closing a little bit. 
Mm -hmm. um, Fike is not as good as they have been in years past. Uh, they played a very difficult non-conference schedule uh, again this year, mm -hmm. and as opposed to basically going undefeated, mm -hmm. they didn't win a game. Uh, but again, you know, talking with, with Rocky Mount coach uh, Jordan Musselwhite, they're, they're playing the, the cream of the crop in, mm -hmm. in, in 3A and 4A soccer. It's, it's, not like, it's not like they're losing to, to Nash Central and Southern Nash here. You know, they, they, they I play. didn't say it. <laughs> I, know, I know you did. But, but we just need a disclaimer on the bottom of the screen. West, <laughs> West didn't, didn't say, say it. it. You know, but, but, but they, they Fike went and played those teams and beat them 9-0 like mm -hmm. they should have. Uh, Rocky Mount has gone. Uh, they're 1-1. One one. They killed Nash Central 9-0. They lost a close 3-1 game to Hunt. Um, you know, and so at the end of the day, I do think Hunt and Fike are probably the two best teams, and they're going to play two remarkable games uh, mm -hmm. during the regular season. And obviously, we'll see uh, what happens in, in the Big East tournament and in the state playoffs. But the thing about Rocky Mountain is they've got a lot of talented players. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going back to the athletes comment we were talking about before, they have a lot of great athletes. Um, and you can see that when they're able to kind of possess the ball a little bit more, uh, really be on the front foot, they're going to be a dangerous team. Defensively, they're a little bit weak, and, and they have a, a goaltender that's slowly but surely learning the position. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not at the Fiker Hunt level yet. But I mean, you look at Barkley Browder, uh, uh, Barkley Browder uh, in the middle, uh, Sarah oh, Bland, Browdy, up, <laughs> uh, Sarah Bland up top. Uh, Skylar Moss up top. Oh, uh, Skylar Moss. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's a striker name. <laughs> it's Britain's sister. It it is. I mean, it is. And and another and, 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 and the other the other Moss sister, uh, Katie Moss, uh, Mary McCauley, and their front six is as good as anybody's in the Big East. The problem is the the back five. Can they play uh, four six? Can they play four three three? <laughs> no midfield necessary. <laughs> uh, you, you know, but again, it's it's it's, it's can they can they can they turn up at the right moment. Last mm -hmm. year they did in the state playoffs. They lost mm -hmm. three times by one goal, held a lead in each of those matches, and couldn't get it done. In the fourth game, fourth game they played in the, in the first round of the state playoffs, uh, Skyler Moss scored on a pass that nobody was on the other end for and went to the side of the net. Uh, a shass. It was a shass. <laughs> it was a shass. It was a shass. It was a shass. And, that, and that's how they, they, they won the game on a shass with a... Uh, with five minutes left. Daniel girls Surge, high school is, Daniel Surge has done it for years. <laughs> yes, uh, girls high school football. There you go. <laughs> girls high school football. Um, girls high school football. But yeah, it, it, it's, it still is Fikes conference to lose at the end of the day. Big East, Premier League, Shass has happened yeah, everywhere. It's, it's it. magic. It is. <laughs> Folks, I hope you've enjoyed uh, getting uh, getting your yeah. fill of the Big East today. Uh, a little, little extra, a little extra from Josh Walfish. He brings the thunder. <laughs> and uh, Wes, we have about five minutes left in the show. Um, do okay. you want to do? Do you want to get as we are want to do on the Afford Affair podcast? Please check us out on iTunes, Podbean, and NGSC Sports. Do you want to get so raw? Just a disclaimer for those of you at home: that's a wrestling term. Yes, <laughs> this is not anything that you need to put the yes. children to bed for. Well, well, you may well. because I do get a little graphic <laughs> on these nights. Oh boy! Anyway, all right, folks. Uh, it is uh, a, a special televised edition of So Raw. What So Raw is? Folks, yeah. We go through the wild world of sports entertainment. I call it professional wrestling. We know Stone Cold. It's not fake. We know it's predetermined. It's not fake. It's predetermined. It's a TV show, folks. As I say to my mother, does Mark Harmon really shoot people? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing more at Ed's reaction. <laughs> I was wondering if the uh, thing here was going to make it through. <laughs> does Mark Harmon really shoot people? No, but it's entertaining when you think he does. Yeah. All right, folks. Uh, as you're watching this show, if you happen to have uh, maybe your laptop open or your um, your your tablet, and you're watching the WWE Network, only nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. WrestleMania 32 is on. Is live from Dallas, Texas, home of the Dallas Cowboys. It's a stone cold voice for all you folks. Yeah. Huh? You know, folks, we have 11 matches. We're going to go down the card and let these two experts <coughs> pick the winners. All right. Okay. We're going to start, gentlemen, the five on five Divas match. Mm -hmm. We have. It's five on five. Five on five. We've got to get all 10 of them a WrestleMania check. Sure. Okay. Got it. it is Team Total Divas <coughs> Paige, Brie Bella, Alicia Fox, Eva Marie, which no one likes, and Natalia. First team, uh, uh, Bad and Blonde, 
which is uh, Emma, who I love, Naomi, Tamina, Lana, who I love, and Summer Rae, who once again I love. Gentlemen, take your pick. Bad and Blonde or Total Divas? Bad and Blonde is slightly less terrible than Team Divas. I'm going to take Total Divas because I want to be contrarian. Because they have a TV show and he's a TV man. And good job. Good job. All right, that's the United States title match, which I don't care about. Ryback, big muscle, I'm a meathead. Versus little tiny FYI around Kalisto, U.S. title. Who's walking out with it, Ed? Kalisto. Kalisto. Of course, Kalisto. No one wants Ryback to win. He's horrible. All right, now for the sure. horrible part of the show. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which is basically everyone who didn't have a match. Um, the returning champion is the Big Show. He's tall. Yeah. He's big. He's bad. Uh, the Wyatts are going to be in there. Kane's going to be in there. The Social Outcasts, who you would probably like, they're going to be in there. Guys, pick me a winner. Kane. Chris Benoit. Ed, you can't say his name on TV. Jeez. <coughs> All right, folks. We have a grudge tag team, tag team match. The Usos and the Dudley Boys. The Dudley Boys from a bygone hey, where the new, attitude the era. Shh, we'll get to them okay. later. A bygone attitude era. The Usos, everybody's favorite second tag team. I'll take Usos. Why not Usos? All right, all right. Um, match of the night, I'm calling it right now, the best wrestling match you'll see all night. Chris Jericho Knockdown versus the, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Maybe my favorite wrestler mm. on the planet right now since Seth Rollins is hurt. Um, this is uh, part three, I believe, of these two. Second straight pay-per-view. Um, seriously, Jericho, about... 10 years ago was the best wrestler in the world. Styles today may be the best wrestler in the world. Um, Styles Jericho. Put the new guy over. Styles. Styles Jericho. Jericho. I like the old guys. I'm a Styles guy. I'm such a Styles guy. That's my ringtone that wakes me up in the morning now. Divas title match. Gentlemen, in the past, we giggled about the Diva, Divas title. We giggle no more because three of the four horsewomen are stop there. We calling it the Divas match then. I believe Monday night it will be stopped called the Divas from now on. All right. All right, we've got Becky Lynch, we've got Sasha Banks, the boss, and we have Charlotte, who some of you may know as Charlotte Flair, daughter of whoo, the Nature Boy. Charlotte goes in as the champion. Who walks out with the butterfly belt and green? Becky Lynch. Charlotte. Woo! <laughs> She's from the Queen City. Now, tag team title match, which apparently I've now heard no longer has the tag team titles up for grabs. It is a... That's it's like actually a title a, match. Yeah, exactly. Let's. I can't really figure this out. Oh, okay. um, it's WWE. Just get over this. It's WWE. They screw with everybody. Uh, basically, it's going to be a four-on-three League of Nations. Rusev, Alberto Del Rio, mm -hmm. Wade Barrett, and... Um, Seamus. Yeah, nobody likes Seamus. They take on Ed's beloved New Day, Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, Big E, the most entertaining trio in wrestling today. Ed, I need a winner. New Day. New Day? New Day. What? Who? Who? Josh. I'm taking the foursome. Ah, the League of Nations. They don't have a trombone. You dirty foreigner. And actually, Ed, one of the bonuses on here, uh, Will Francesca, too, survived the match. Yes. That's the trombone. Yes. Okay. She, she, no, she will not, but she will be the match winner. She <laughs> will sacrifice herself to win it. That is the trombone. Since we brought the trombone, there is a bonus yeah. question. Will the trombone <laughs> survive the match? All right, Intercontinental You're title nice ladder though. match. Uh, Zack Ryder versus Sin Cara versus Stardust versus Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz versus Sami Zayn versus my boy Kevin Owens. Ed, go. The Miz, I guess. Dolph? KO Mania. All right, now we get to our three main events, our three-headed main event. Uh, street Fight, Dean Ambrose, Brock Lesnar. This should kind of be a no-brainer, even though I love Dean Ambrose. Ambrose. Brock. I mean, it's Brock Lesnar, dude. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he play. hurts people for real for fun. I think they need a twist somewhere. Heck in a cell. Sure. Because I won't say the real bad word here. Okay. Undertaker versus Shane McMahon. If Shane McMahon wins, he gets control of Monday Night Raw. If The Undertaker wins or loses, I'm sorry, uh, he will no longer uh, be able to wrestle at WrestleMania. Shane McMahon, it's a good way to start the new season of Raw. It's we'll stupid, but man, we'll it's, it's really not? stupid. Watch it. There are going to be so many run-ins and so much schmoz in this match. It's going to be fantastic. To end the night, the thing no one wants to see, the WWE World Heavyweight title match. Roman Reigns. I'm picking it right now. <laughs> Triple H versus Roman Reigns. Three H's. Triple H, he's going to bury another one. We'll see. Uh, bonus question. 
Uh, what will be The Rock's big role? I don't know. Rough for it. Will he sell pretzels? No. The Rock's going to drink a Steve Weiser. He'll That's put, my he'll put, he'll put someone over. Any surprise appearances? No. No surprise of it. No. We have no time. We're literally out of I time. I have the Raven. He's A. Green. He's Josh Walfish. I'm Wes Presley. Follow us on at All New Sports Show. Thank you to all our sponsors you've seen across the bottom of the screen tonight. And uh, find us on Facebook. Those interviews we mentioned we would show tonight, they're still on Facebook and our YouTube page. Just find All New Sports Show. Don't forget, disclaimer, anything you heard on this show, Wes did not say it. We will see you guys next week. Uh, fight betting field if yep. nothing changes. You guys enjoy. Have a great week. We'll be back later with more of the all-new sports show on WHIG-TV.